Hey there, so I have a very serious question for you today. My question is very simple and straight to the point. You ready? What is your why? Right? So we often hear this. If you're a school teacher, I'm sure you've heard it in pre-planning, post-planning, meetings with your school, teacher meetings, leadership meetings, and a lot of people, the conversation comes in, you know, ask yourself, what's your why? Right? There's someone says to Jason, says to me, hey, Dr. A, Jason, what's your why? And following this video, I want you to take pencil to paper. And I want you to write this down. I want you to think to yourself and contemplate, what is your why? Why are you in education? If this is something you want to talk about with me and listen to my why in this video, stay tuned. Before we do that, once again, my name is Dr. Ray. I'm the founder of the Learning Liaisons. If you like these kind of conversations, drop a comment below. Let me know what your why is. Click that like button, subscribe to the channel. It helps out the almighty YouTube algorithm gods and helps to get this message out to other teachers. And while you're at it, click that little notification bell. This way you can see our new videos when we come out with these every week here at the Learning Liaison channel. So stay tuned and I'm going to share with you what my why is and challenge you to think about yours. All right, so the million dollar question of this video is what is your why? So I'm gonna give you a brief little story, a little background on myself. You can find out my full story on the Learning Liaisons website up on the team menu. But I always ask myself this question, you know, what is your why, Jason? Well, as some of you might know, and if you don't know, now you know, I started out as a teacher, right? So I was born and raised in Long Island, New York. Big shout out to my people from New York out there. And in 2000, I moved down to the state of Florida where I started my graduate program in secondary education. Now, my undergrad was in history and I went to SUNY Albany, State University of New York at Albany, and I graduated with a history degree and a Spanish minor. So if you're not from the Northeast and you're born and raised in Florida and other states, up in the Northeast, especially in New York, if you graduate with a degree in history, the question is, what are you gonna do with that, right? I can't go into the classroom and teach. Now, if you're in a state where there's lots of different alt cert routes to become a teacher, there's like 40 something different ways you could become a teacher. You don't need an education degree to become a teacher. However, in New York, you do, right? So they have all kinds of rules. Sometimes it's changing. I'm not abreast of the recent rule, but basically you have to get your master's within five years in education to keep your job. That's not the case in most states around the country. So with a history degree, I'm like, what the crap? Where, what am I gonna do with a history degree? Am I gonna go work in a museum or something? Sounds cool, but not really my cup of tea. It was just the only thing that really interests me as I was progressing through my undergrad degree. So fast forward, move down to the state of Florida, start my graduate degree in education. I got my first teaching job right after I graduated while I'm a master's from the University of Central Florida. Go Knights to my fellow Knights, drop a comment below. Um, let me know if you're a knight too or what university you've been to. I, I love reading the comments here. Um, but I came down to Florida. I'm like, I want to be a teacher. I have to go get my, my master's in education. So I graduated in 2002. I'm a master's in education. Got my first teaching job. So my why? I had a passion for helping other people. My close circle of friends around me, like, you're going to be a teacher, Jason, right? I, didn't, I really didn't picture that for you. I pictured something a little bit different. But I was naturally introverted, right? So I really was not an outspoken person. And, and, and going to grad school really challenged me and kind of opened me up, blossom for, for lack of a better term, to you know, speak about education, give my thoughts, you know, raise my hand, partake in the conversations and the, at the collegial level with my fellow colleagues and professors. And I really started to, to grasp the concept of helping others in graduation and the pedagogy behind it and helping kids grow throughout their throughout their elementary through high school years. So got my first job at teaching in 2002, and I really loved helping people, right? That's your why. I know some people get into education uh, for the money. Haha, -ha, that's a joke. We really don't. Maybe some people do, but most of us, because we have a passion for helping other people. So my why, when I was teaching middle school for five years, I taught high school for five years, my why was seeing the smile on the kids, right? I didn't teach elementary, I didn't have the opportunity to do that. Focused on middle school for five years, high school for five years. But granted, it doesn't matter what grade level you teach, it's all about making those connections, having the light bulb moments, as they say, go off in their head, showing kids that they can learn, they can be successful, 
because growing up, I was not a very good student. Now, I didn't fail everything. I wasn't a straight A student. I was like that middle of the road student and I had a lot of challenges growing up, especially at my elementary school label. I was a, I was a very, uh, how do I say this? I was a struggling reader comprehension. They didn't have the labels back in the day like they did now. Um, I'm not that old, but not that young. And I struggled a lot. I always remember getting pulled out of the classroom every day with another student sitting in a small, you know, six by six room, maybe it was like eight by eight. I'm sitting there for hours working one on one with another teacher, with a teacher to try to work on my organization, work on my comprehension, work on my reading skills, because I really didn't enjoy that. And I didn't really have that passion for learning. And that's ultimately what drove me and pushed me towards going through grad school and doing my doctorate as well. Because when I started teaching in 2002, I saw the enjoyment in helping others, right? And then I kept teaching for, for about 10 years in the public schools, middle school and high school. And I love what I did. So think about your why. Now, a lot of people ask me, hey, Dr. Ray, why did you quit teaching? Why? How did you get to where you are now? What, what came about from starting a test prep company to help people with their certification tests? Well, long story short, during my 10 years of teaching public school, when I finished my grad program, I actually went right into my doc program. That uh, I had opportunity to start the doctoral program in curriculum instruction at the University of Central Florida in, t in 2003. So while I was teaching full time at the school district, I proceeded to go through my doctor program because when I got in that classroom in 2002, you know, I saw the connections, the kids enjoyed learning. I took all the stuff I learned at UCF in my grad program, started applying it to the classroom, saw a lot of great results. Then I, you know, I moved districts, whatever, taught middle school five years, high school five years. And during the high school, when I started, I started saying, I'm like, you know what? I want to do more. I, I love working with the kids. I love them. I love the content, but I want to do more. And while teaching at the University of Central Florida, I started doing that in 2009, um, I saw a, a, a big need uh, for test prep because I saw students in my classes, my courses, they were studying for their certification exams. And I've been through that before. I took the exams. So I saw the struggles and I saw a lot of these students just trying to memorize things, trying to trying to do practice tests over and over again. I'm like, you know what, we need to help more. And, it, and that's where learning liaisons was the, what it looks like today, kind of came to fruition in about 2014 when I started really small, making these courses, working with school districts, and it just flourished from there. But that's a whole not, another conversation. Back to the why, right? Why do I do what I do? Well, it transformed from being in the classroom, working with my students and getting those aha moments and she, showing the, uh, seeing the engagement, seeing the motivation to helping more people. Now my why every day and what I love what I do. I'm in a, in a position where I help thousands and thousands of teachers every single year pass our certification exams along with all of our rock star teachers on our website. But my why transformed to the, the kids in my classroom to getting up every single day with the voicemails, the text messages, the Facebook posts, the Facebook messages, all these teachers with selfies and putting up their past reports and saying thank you. Thank you to one of the teachers in the course. Thank you to me. You saved my job or you helped me graduate. That is what my why is, right? It's about seeing you be successful on your exam. Just like I wanted my kids in middle school and high school to be successful and show that growth and actually enjoy learning, my drive right now switched from that to a much bigger scale, making more of an impact across the country. My why now is, like I said, getting those messages every single day on various social platforms and phone calls and emails from teachers just like you who have been successful and now they don't have to worry about their exams anymore. Now they can focus on what's really important, which is teaching the kids in the classroom. So I challenge you after this video to take a piece of paper and spend about five, 10 minutes and write down what is your why. Don't just think about it in your head, make it real. Put those words on paper, it makes a very big difference. And I want you to challenge yourself every single day when you get up Monday through Friday to help your kids in your classroom be successful. Or if you're a college student, getting through your coursework, being engaged, asking questions, making yourself the best possible version of yourself as you graduate to embark on your journey of teaching in the classroom. We need you, our college students, 
don't go anywhere. I know your exams can be stressful, your coursework could be stressful, but we need you. To my classroom teachers out there, your why hopefully is helping kids every day be the best that they could be in the classroom, whether it's K through 12. All right. So I challenge you to do that. Hopefully this kind of opened your eyes to a little different line of thought. I know a lot of people have already been asked that question throughout their life, what's your why? But in education, it's very important because let's be frank, it can be a struggle. I've been in your shoes. I was a teacher for 10 years in the public school, 10 years at the University of Central Florida as well. And I know the struggle is real. But if you have a bad day, someone frustrates you, something doesn't go the way you want it to, and we all get frustrated, we all have bad days. But at the end of the day, always think about your why. Why are you doing what you're doing right now, being in the profession of education? And if that's an easy answer for you, because you wanna help kids and make the world a better place, well, kudos to you. If you struggle with what's your why, well, maybe you need to change careers, right? Because our kids deserve passionate, motivated, confidence building educators in the classroom and if you struggle always lean back and think about what's your why and that'll help you refocus in on and keep charging on to what is most important in your life which is obviously part of your life plan is to be a teacher and hopefully you're understanding your why and you're going in the right direction if you have any questions concerns i do play part psychiatrist during the daytime as well because i'm answering phone calls and working with teachers who are struggling if you have a frustration with your why or, or education in general, drop a comment below. I love reading these and seeing what you guys are thinking. But most importantly, most importantly, when you're done with this video, share what your why is in a sentence or two below this video in the comments because I want to know what your why is. And if there's anything I can do to help you along that process, don't hesitate to contact us. My information is in all the descriptions of the videos. And with that, I'm Dr. A, founder of The Learning Liaisons. I hope you have a great rest of your day and good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world watching this video and hope to catch you in the next one. And always remember, I'll leave you with the same thing. I tell all of our students, all of our teachers we help in our certification courses, always remember, it's when you pass, not if you pass. It's all about knowledge, skill, and attitude. We will catch you in the next video.